did you know that there are different types of narcissists? When we think of a narcissist, we think of someone who is self-absorbed and has little to no empathy for others. But that's not all narcissists. In this video, we will cover four different types of narcissists. This video is for educational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional advice. With that said, here are some different types of narcissists. Number one, the grandiose narcissist. Have you ever encountered a person who is charming, self-absorbed, entitled, aggressive, and authoritarian? You feel that they are overly callous, aggressive, and think highly of themselves without trying to put themselves in other people's shoes. They're also argumentative and want to win in every altercation or in a slight misunderstanding. They are classified as grandiose narcissists. They portray the classical presentation of narcissistic personality disorder according to the criteria listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM. They often seek validation from outward sources. When they are in a romantic relationship, grandiose narcissists try to obtain power by game playing. As parents, they view their children as a narcissistic supply or an extension of themselves in order to obtain validation from other people. A grandiose narcissist is extroverted and displays overt expressions of superiority and entitlement. Number two, the vulnerable narcissist. The vulnerable narcissist is a person who appears unapproachable, unfriendly, or cold, negative and unassertive. A person who is both high in neuroticism and self-centered will likely worry about their perceived superior status. They thrive on attention and accolades. They tend to give hints at how hard they've been working or how much they've achieved, yet look puzzled and perhaps even become astonished when they receive acknowledgement for their hard work or significant achievements. They have a self-image that is divided into a positive self-image with excessive pride and a negative self-image that is filled with shame. When they receive constructive criticism and gentle feedback, they become hypersensitive. Receiving only positive feedback gives them the ability to bury the negative shame-filled self-image. When these individuals receive feedback, they perceive them as an attack on their character. And this activates powerful feelings of self-disgust and self-blame and unavoidable shame. Vulnerable narcissists also blame other people and circumstances for their mistakes. They rarely accept responsibility for their actions. Number three, the communal narcissist. Have you ever encountered a person that was kind on the surface, but they're mean once you got to know them? If you have, then perhaps you're actually dealing with a communal narcissist. On the surface, a communal narcissist emphasizes warmth, agreeableness, and relatedness. They wanna uphold an image of the most trustworthy and supportive person by the public. They try to gain this by portraying an image of friendliness and kindness. It's not wrong to actually be kind and friendly towards others. However, the key point here is the communal narcissist's motives are grandiosity, esteem, entitlement, and power. And number four, the malignant narcissist. Narcissism exists on a spectrum, and at the extreme end lies the malignant narcissist. This kind of narcissist is paranoid, immoral, cruel, aggressive, and sadistic. By creating chaos and taking people down, they feel pleasure. They may not be necessarily grandiose, extroverted, or neurotic, but the characteristics that this kind of narcissist has are closely associated with psychopathy, the dark triad, and antisocial personality disorder. With the rise of social media, we also find the simultaneous rise of the label narcissist. It is turned into a buzzword. Therefore, refrain from labeling as it can actually be demonizing. Of course, when a truly narcissistic person receives an accurate diagnosis from a licensed professional, it will actually be helpful as it sheds light on their symptoms and gives them an opportunity to access a community of similar people so that they're on the road to recovery. Also remember narcissism exists on a spectrum. And some of us may have that narcissistic trait in us, and that's actually all right. The most important point here is to be self-aware and to have the drive to change yourself for the better. Did you find this video valuable? Tell us in the comments below. Please like and share it with friends that might find use in this video too. Make sure to subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell for more content. All the references used are added in the description box below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.